Um, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> um. <laughs> Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very special guest. We have Max. Today I'm going to be talking about five mistakes that I have made in the first two months of owning Max. These are things I've definitely learned along the way. I post lifestyle content on my channel, so if you like videos like this, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Okay, we'll just get into it. Okay, so first major thing that I've learned is one. I wish that we had our potty pad outside from the beginning. So if you are like me and you live in an apartment and you know it's a little bit challenging to always bring your dog downstairs and then you go to the bathroom, especially during those early morning bathroom breaks, like I'm talking two in the morning, four in the morning, it's really tough to bring them down the elevator. So we bought one of those puppy pads that has like the fake turf and it sits on a little thing with puppy pads and you clean up the pads and you clean up the turf. Well, we had that inside right next to our balcony door. So we figured if we had it by the door, oh, Max hears other barking from our neighbors. But we figured if we had it by the balcony door, Max would associate like the door going potty. Well, we were wrong. First, he was walking over there voluntarily when he had to go to the bathroom. It's another thing, always have a chew toy because when they're puppies, they want to chew on everything, so show your hands. Well, Max would voluntarily go to the bathroom on the puppy pad, so he'd walk over there, he'd go, it was great. I'm like, this is amazing, he's so smart. Well then, after a while, he started just peeing everywhere but the potty pad. So on the floors, in the bathroom, like everywhere. I'm like, what is going on? You just were doing so well, walking over to the potty pad and going to the bathroom, what happened? Well, I think as he got older, he started to learn that outside is where you go to the bathroom. And so he wasn't associating the potty pad anymore as like a place to go to the bathroom. So we moved the potty pad on our balcony. We have not had an accident since. Now he will wait by the door if he really needs to go to the bathroom, but we always try to bring him downstairs. Potty pad, we try to use his last resort, but for me, when I'm in between meetings or something comes up or he has to go really bad, he walks over to the door, he looks at us, he tells us I have to go to the bathroom, and then we let him outside to go on the potty pad. So what I'm trying to say is I wish that we had our potty pad on our balcony since day one. It just got really messy, literally. It was pretty messy. It wasn't fun. So. Potty pad outside, hasn't had an accident since. Okay, my next piece of advice, something I wish I did, having him go in the crate on the weekends. So we were doing a really great job crate training him, but the problem was is on weekends, we weren't putting him in his crate because we didn't need him to be in his crate. So he was like roaming, hanging out with us. So then Monday would roll around and he was just like hating his crate. And I'm like, I'm so confused because you normally love your crate. It's always Mondays. He absolutely just like, would whine and cry. So what I gathered is over the weekend, he got really used to just like hanging out with us and spending time with us and roaming around that he kind of forgot about like being in the crate during the day. So I wish on the weekend that I had put him in the crate. Now we do for a little bit, a couple hours, we'll put him in the crate. But it's also a good way to like have the separation. I wanted to make sure that Max had a separation from me so that he wasn't always depending on me. It's really important, especially you know, if you are like me and you are working from home, but you won't for the rest of your life, I'm eventually gonna go back into the office. So I wanted to make sure that he wasn't super dependent on me and that he would be able to be by himself. So that's kind of our separation is when I put him in the crate, it's his time so that he's not always depending on me. So moral of the story is make sure if you are crate training that you do it on weekends. Whoa, you good? So the next one is demonizing a word. And what I mean by that is when you are training, it's really important to use positive reinforcement rather than the negative reinforcement. Um, that's something I definitely have been doing in training with Max. However, something I learned is that it apparently is really bad if you say a word like multiple times. So you can't be like, no, 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 or uh, sit, sit, sit. Like repeating it so many times makes like a negative association to your dog. I don't fully understand, so like I'm not here to tell you how to train your dog. I'm just saying, for instance, personal experience of mine is Max is pretty well behaved. We've got him to do quite a lot for his age, but for some reason, having him come to me is the hardest thing on the planet. We have not mastered that. And something I think is the major reason why is because when I'm trying to get Max to come to me, I'll be like, Max, come, come come and I repeat it so many times I feel like that word now is just negative in his brain and now he's like nope I don't want to come so now I'm trying things like come to me and even that is 
is better because I feel like even the me is a little more like optimistic but I wish I could go back and maybe not have a negative reinforcement with that word having your dog come to you is like literally one of the most important parts of training and obedience so it's just really important to make sure that you are doing research when you're training on like how to go about it and even like your vocal tone and how many times you say it actually really impacts whether your dog picks it up or associates with it so like I said, I've had to relearn saying come to me and the come to me has definitely helped. When I try to say Max come, it doesn't work. Okay, my next one isn't as big of an issue now, but it was the very beginning, is bringing your dog in too early when you bring them out to the bathroom. So if you are like me and you're from Minnesota, it is freezing. So when we would take Max to the bathroom, he would go and then I'd grab him, we'd quickly go back inside. Well, then sometimes he would come back inside and have a little more pee and pee on the floor. Or like he just didn't fully release his bladder because when they're puppies, I don't think they fully release. And when I say this, I'm talking like the first couple weeks. This is definitely not a problem anymore, but if you are a brand new puppy owner, this is something to consider. When you bring your dog outside, bring them out, let them pee, wait a few minutes. I know it sucks, you're freezing, you wanna go inside, you're tired, you wanna go back to bed, I get it. But it's super important that you wait and let them pee, let them finish, get anything out of their bladder or like their stomach because if they come back inside and finish peeing inside, again, negative association with going to the bathroom inside versus outside. So make sure that you let your dog go to the bathroom all the way, wait a few minutes, and then bring them inside. Okay, the next one. It's just really important to understand their diet. Um, I mentioned this on another video, but we gave Max a bone way, way too early, and he puked up that bone, had diarrhea, it was terrible. And so that's something to really consider is making sure that you don't introduce anything in their diet too early. Talk to your, the breeder, talk to your vet. Just make sure that you consider their diet. I wish I didn't give him that bone because he threw up and it was really big pain to clean it up. It's actually quite disgusting. So make sure you know their diet before you introduce anything new. And last, <laughs> okay, so this one is like super embarrassing to admit. I hate to admit it. It's super important to not let certain things slide and think that they'll just outgrow it. For instance, Max would chew on his leash and I thought, oh, okay, like he just is teething. He, this is a way of like, I don't know. Now that he's older, he loves chewing on his leash and I like can't get him to stop. And it's something that I'm like, why did I even let him do this? I should have told him no from the beginning. We are very good about being consistent and saying no on things and the chewing on the leash is something we both just let slide, which is super not okay. So we're learning to get him to stop chewing on his leash, but that's been kind of a hurdle. So it's important that you don't let things slide and assume that they'll grow out of it because it's not always the case. Okay, so that is my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this helps any of you guys. Please feel free to leave a comment with any suggestions, tips, anything you've learned. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.